Hey everyone, this is Michelle with Vin Von Alley. I hope you guys are well. I'm just hopping on here for a quick uh, moment. Um, I've been uh, watching uh, Anika's. I'll, I'll, I'll um, put her YouTube channel in the description, but Anika, Anika's plans, I believe. I'm not sure, but um, she was talking about uh, the SOAP method and, you know, the Happy Planner has incorporated the SOP, SOAP method in um, their faith planners, which is scripture, observation, application. Uh, what is the P again? I think it's practice. I'm not sure. But um, I was just uh, stating that I don't like to be locked into any particular method. Um because I want the, the option to move whichever way the spirit of the Lord has me, um, to go as far as doing my Bible study. Maybe that you want to use there's, I forgot the, um, there's another method that you can use for uh, Bible study, but I mentioned that I like the Rhea method. And let me just say, I don't know if it's actually, um, stated as a, as a method. It may be, um, a technique. I first read about Rhea, which I'll explain is revelation, interpretation, and application. And I first read about it in a book, and I believe it was by Jonathan Shelton. Um, you can find his books on Amazon. I first um, noted it. His book came with, um, it was an, a, a book where you were able to, the back of it, there was like a um, um, practice lessons for you to, for, for you to do each day or each week. I can't remember. I have a ton of books and I read that book a while ago, but I also, um, heard Tom Joyner expound upon, up, upon, um, revelation, interpretation and application. Well, I'm going to show you how I use that method and I don't use it all the time. I'm going to, I think, again, I'm saying method, it's technique, but, um, I'll just say way of Bible study and I I don't use it all the time, but sometimes when I just feel like I need to just dig in to the word in, in a way that I can just break it down um, to show how it was revealed, the, the scripture was revealed to me, how I interpret it and how I can apply it, if that makes sense. So I made this little half sheet here and I made this half sheet out of cardstock. I put washi on the spine, punched the holes. This is for the classic happy planner size. And I used the colorful boxes and I made three sections here for revelation, interpretation, application. And then there's a little box up here that I put, which is going to be the key scripture. And the scripture that I'm going to focus on to show you this example is Psalm 126 and 5. And this is one that just leaped out at me um, last week. So I thought it would be a good um, scripture to use. And Psalm 126 and five says, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Now you can use it for a verse or you can use it for a chapter, this, this um, Rhea technique. So you're not bound to just use it for just a verse, but any way that you choose. And I'm going to just going to write the scripture here, which is, I think this pen is dying on me. This is my G2. I'm going to have to get me another one. Psalm 126 and 5. So I'll put the key scripture up there. And then I'm going to put here, this is going to be the revelation part. This is going to be the interpretation. Don't mind my scroll. My chicken scratch, my hand, my penmanship is not the best. And this is going to be the application. I'm going to see if I can find me another pen. I mean, I have my petite pilot. Where is it? Let me grab that. I don't want to change a pen that doesn't have the same um, weight. This is my Petite Pilot. I did a video on that. If, you, if you're wondering, this Petite Pilot fountain pen is from um, Jet Pens. Okay, so Revelation. Let's start with that. What is being revealed to me in the Word? 
And the word says, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. The first thing that stands out to me is sow and reap. And immediately when I see those two words, it becomes relative to planting. And whenever I, this is the K, KJV version, by the way, the King James version. And whenever I study scripture, I always use, I love the King James version. I think there's something that just speaks to your spirit when you read the King James version. But then I also read the NLT and this is my um, Inspire NLT Bible. So we're going to read it also in the NLT. That's how I get more meaning and meat out of the word is by reading different translations. I always um, go between Amplified, King James Version, NLT, and even the um, the easy. I'll read that sometime, the easy reading version. But let's read the NLT, which in verse five, it says, those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. I love that. I love that. And then I'm going to read the preceding um, um, verse that says, they weep as they go to plant their seed, but they sing as they return with the harvest. I'm sorry, I get passionate about the word. So I was like, wow, immediately that just, that just speaks to my spirit because when you think of planting, you think of planting a seed. Let's go back to the soul part. So the revelation for me is that um, our lives are similar or the things that we go through in life are similar to planting, right? I'll just put that down as one point. That's one thing that's been revealed to me in this verse. Um, then I'm going to go back and I'm going to look and it says those that plant in tears. First of all, what are we planting? It's got to be a seed, right? Now, let's think about a seed. A seed is dried up. It has no life. It's dead. Oh boy, I'm about to get deep here. So many things just jump out at me. So in order for that seed to produce anything, you have to first put it in the ground, plant it, cover it up with dirt, and then you have to water it. You have to care for it. So I'm like, okay, a seed is something dead, but it's being put into a, the ground and the soil, what the soil does, it creates pressure and it pressures that seed. It creates pressure against that seed and coupled with the watering, it helps to put pressure and allow that seed to break open and then sprout, right? Oh boy, where am I going with this, Lord? Help me. So I'm like thinking to myself, well, Lord, a seed is something dead. But the Lord says that they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. So what are you saying to me, Lord, that you can take dead things and bring them to life? Well, we know that's true. Just look at Lazarus. Just look at Lazarus. Did he not, did Jesus not call for Lazarus out of the tomb? Yes, he did. So another revelation is that God can resurrect dead things. 
or in our case, dead situations. Think about it. Have you ever um, wanted to do something and you knew that it was God's uh, plan for you to do something or there was a plan that was in place and it just seemed like everything just fell apart and it was just dead. There was no way that this thing can come to pass. But, but God, but God, and he helped to resurrect that dead situation. God can resurrect, resurrect any dead situation in our life. And that is what he is saying here, because you look at that thing and you start crying and you say, God, I know this was you. I know this was the timing. I know that, you know, this is what I was supposed to do, but why is it dead? Why has it fallen apart? And God's saying, just hold on and have faith. And you're crying and you're crying. But he says, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. God has the power to resurrect dead things. I'm not going to put any more points there. Let's move on to the interpretation part. How do I interpret this scripture? So I interpret it to say that. Oh, the interpretation part is for you to interpret it how you understand it. So how do I understand it? Just as we said. And I'm just going to write it out how I've interpreted the scripture. And I'm going to talk it out while I'm writing it. Even though. Trials may come and it seems as if what uh, we're striving for. I write too big. Is dead. God is able to bring it to life. Amen. Those who plant in tears, that means you've, you've, you've taken that dead thing and you've cried over it. You've taken what seems impossible. You've taken that difficult child. You've taken that wayward husband. You've taken that, that, that loss of a job. You've taken that loss of a home. You've taken that loss of an income. And you said, God, what is going on? And you've cried over it. You've taken that dead thing. And God says, mm -mm. I've seen your tears and I am going to give you a harvest. You are going to rejoice. Wow. Now the application part, the application part is how are you going to apply this revelation and interpretation to your life. Now this you can do as you personally please. You can just write out your personal thoughts and how do you, how do you think this how it applies to you right now or how do you think it can apply to you in the future because the word of God is our sword. So maybe it doesn't apply to you right now but maybe there's going to come a time when you're going to need this word to rely on. And you're going to need to go back to it and you're going to need to read to get encouragement, to gain strength. And you're going to say right here, well, how does this apply to me now? Or how is it, how am I going to use it to, um, to apply to a, a situation of a situ you know, a given situation should, um, a circumstance happen where it seems like it's all dead. And that's where you would put in your application. Um, but here I'm going to write it as if it's a note to myself. And I'm going to say, remember, that no matter what,
what the situation. looks like God is able to turn it around and turn your weeping into rejoicing. I'm just writing off the page here. I'm gonna go with this. And that is that. Here's my key scripture. Here's the revelation of what I got out of that, out of the scripture. Here's how I interpret it. And here's how I can apply it to my current situation or even my situation that may come up. Revelation, interpretation, application, the Rhea technique. <laughs> I don't want to say method and turn it into something that it's not, but this is it. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was something that um, you can use and you can utilize in your Bible study and in your time with the Lord. I really enjoy doing this. I love the word of God because it strengthens me and I hope it does the same for you. If you enjoyed this, please go ahead and give this a thumbs up. Also, uh, don't neglect to comment and interact with me. Um, I enjoy that. I like to know that I'm providing some kind of content that is um, something that you can use. And for my returning subbies, I so appreciate you. Thank you for hanging out with me and watching another video. And for those that are new that are watching, please go ahead and consider to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss any future videos. I love you guys.